In this video, I'm going to quickly run you through setting up a Creality Sonic Pad and connecting it to a non-Creality 3D printer. This is the first video in a short series that will not only get your Sonic Pad controlling your 3D printer, but will show you how to tune your settings to get the most out of not only the Sonic Pad, but any setup running Clipper. If you don't have a Sonic Pad yet, then check out my review, or if you want the TLDR version, it's great if you don't want the hassle of setting up multiple bits to do the same job. If you plan on buying a Sonic Pad, then check out the purchase links with a discount code below for a great deal. As I said, this is the first in a series of short guides that will get you started with your Sonic Pad. By the end of this series, you'll have Clipper firmware installed on your 3D printer, your Sonic Pad connected to your 3D printer, and your first print complete. If you're wondering what Clipper is, it's the 3D printer firmware that the Sonic Pad uses to control and enhance the hardware of your 3D printer. If you have a 3D printer that is listed in the supported models on your Sonic Pad, then click here to go to a different video that will show you how to get it connected to your machine. If, however, you don't have one of the models that's supported with a profile on the Sonic Pad, then I'll run you through how to get your machine set up with a Sonic Pad running Clipper. The first thing I would advise doing before even turning on your Sonic Pad is to find the latest Marlin firmware for your 3D printer as a backup. To be able to control your firmware, the Sonic Pad is going to overwrite the firmware on your 3D printer. This may seem daunting, but it's almost as simple as updating a smartphone, and I'll show you how to do it. If for any reason you want to revert back to controlling your 3D printer without the Sonic Pad, then you'll need to reinstall Marlin firmware. I'll link to some resources for finding firmware for your machine in the description below. Just find the right file for your 3D printer and save it on your computer just in case you might want it later. Okay, now we have a backup, it's time to start playing. Plug in and turn on your Sonic Pad. Once it's powered up, select your language, read and accept Creality's privacy policy and select your region. Once you've done this, your pad will try to find a wireless network to connect to. If you see your Wi-Fi network, select it and type in your Wi-Fi password. If not, you can type in all of the details manually after selecting the Add Network option. You don't have to give the Sonic Pad a Wi-Fi connection. You can give it an Ethernet connection directly to your router if you like. Or you don't have to connect it to a network at all if you don't want to. You just won't be able to connect to it and control your 3D printer remotely if you don't. Once you've done this, you'll have the opportunity to give your Sonic Pad a different name if you want to. Click Next Step and we can get on to setting up the printer connection. On the printer selection page, scroll all the way to the right until you see the other models box. Select this, then click on next step. Here you have a couple of options. The first thing we need to do is plug in a USB lead from our 3D printer into one of our USB ports on the Sonic Pad. This will become the USB port that's assigned to this 3D printer from now on, so choose a port that suits your installation. Click on Get Hardware Serial Port ID and then Get, and you will then be shown the port ID. You may need to turn your printer on to get this information. Once you have it, write it down because we're going to need it later. Click OK to turn to the previous menu and then click on Motherboard Firmware Compile. This is where we'll enter a few basic settings to tell our Sonic Pad how to create firmware that we can put on our 3D printer so that the Sonic Pad can talk to it. To find the information that we need to enter here, we need to go to the Clipper GitHub config directory, which I've linked in the description below. Here you'll find a list of configuration files for many different 3D printers. I'm going to demonstrate using an Artillery Sidewinder X2. So after finding it in the file list, I'll click on it. This file gives us all the information we need to get this 3D printer working with Clipper. What we're initially looking for is the basic information at the top, which tells us the setting to use when compiling firmware on our Sonic Pad. My file tells me that my Sidewinder X2 has an STM32 processor. The actual model is STM32F401. The printer has no bootloader and the communication interface is USB on PA11 slash PA12. I can now enter all this information on the Sonic Pad and hit generate after inserting a USB stick into another USB port. Your new firmware will then be generated, which takes around 30 seconds or so. Once it's done, you'll see a message telling you that the firmware file has been generated and then it says, is it exported? What you need to do is select export. What it will do then is take you to another screen that asks you how you want to get the firmware onto your 3D printer. On some 3D printers, you'll be able to brush or send the firmware directly to your 3D printer through the USB lead. However, my Sidewinder isn't one of those models, so I'll export the firmware to a USB flash drive that I've already inserted. After clicking OK, the file will be copied and you'll receive a success message. Click OK and then back.
we now need to do two things. We need to flash our new firmware to our 3D printer, and then we need to create a configuration file to tell our Sonic Pad all about our 3D printer and how to control it. The way to flash firmware to a 3D printer varies from machine to machine, and I'm not going to be able to give you detailed information for all options here. However, most 3D printer manufacturers give instructions on how to update the firmware on their machines. Find instructions for your particular 3D printer and then use them to update the firmware with the file that your Sonic Pad just created for you. With my Sidewinder, I had to use Prontoface to tell the printer's control board to enter DFU mode and then use a separate program on my PC to send the file. I've added a number of different non-Creality machines to my Sonic Pad and this was the most complicated because it doesn't have something called a bootloader. On many machines, it will just simply be a case of copying the file to an SD card, turning your printer off, putting the SD card in, and then turning the printer back on. The only way to use your 3D printer after you do this will be with it connected via USB to your Sonic Pad. If you want to revert back afterwards, then follow the exact same process that you found for updating your firmware, but use the standard Marlin firmware file instead. Be aware that file names are important with some boards, but not with others. Once you have your new firmware on your 3D printer, we need to create a configuration file for the Sonic Pad. To do this, we're going to start with a template file that Creality supplies, and then we're going to copy and paste information from that Clipper configuration file that we found earlier. Follow the Creality config file link in the description, and then download and unzip the file labeled Creality Sonic Pad Printer .config configuration tutorial. Inside, you'll find two files a guide on editing the config file, and then the configuration file itself. If you don't have Notepad++, then download and install this first and use it to open the config file. What you'll see when you open your Creality config file template is a similar looking page full of text that you see on the Clipper config file. Arrange your screen so that you have the Clipper config file up on the left and the Notepad++ Creality config file on the right. What we're going to do is scroll through and overwrite some of the information on the Creality file with the information specific to your 3D printer. To start with, you'll see on the first couple of lines information for an Ender 3 S1. Overtype this with whatever you want your 3D printer to be called on your Sonic Pad. Leave the hash and exclamation marks at the beginning. On the next line, edit the printer size information to match your machine's dimensions. You'll then see, a couple of lines down, text that says, do not modify this configuration. We're not going to change anything here, so scroll down until you find the end of this section. The section we are going to modify is labeled, please configure according to different printer models. The first header is stepper X. All of the details below relate to how the control board controls the X axis stepper motor. Find the same headed section of the clipper config file and copy all of the settings. Then highlight all of the settings on the Creality config file and paste the information you just copied. Do this for every headed section on the Clipper file. As you get further down, you may find that some of the headings are in a different order, or you may have headings on the Clipper file that are not on the Creality file and vice versa. This is fine, the order's not important. Once you've overwritten anything that's duplicated in each file, copy over anything that's in the Clipper file, including the heading, and paste it into the bottom of the section that's labeled for you to configure making sure you leave a line space between each section. When you get to the MCU section, instead of copying the information from the Clipper file, on the line labeled Serial, manually type in the information we wrote down earlier when we got the port ID on our Sonic Pad. Once all of the details are copied over, click on File at the top and then Save As. Save the file to the root directory of a USB drive. All this means is don't put it in a folder, just copy it straight to the drive. Change the name of the file to just printer.cfg and select Normal Text File from the drop down and save. Check that the file type is showing as a CFG or config file. We're now ready to go back to the Sonic Pad and complete the setup. If you had to unplug it to update your firmware, reconnect the USB lead from the Sonic Pad to your 3D printer. Just make sure that you plug it into the same port that you were using earlier. You should be on the same screen shown here, but if not, navigate to it as I did earlier in the video. Now insert your USB drive containing your printer configuration file into a different USB port. Wait a few seconds and then click next step. The Sonic Pad will detect the printer config file and you can then press loaded. It will then ask you to double check that your printer is connected via USB and switched on. Check that it is and then hit OK. The Sonic Pad will then read the configuration file and try to connect to your printer. 
If all goes well, you'll see a message saying that the file was loaded successfully and that the machine will now perform a self-test. After clicking OK and Next Step, you'll enter the next stage of setup, where your Sonic Pad will get you to check a couple of things before running you through everything else you need to do before you can start printing. Click here for the next part of my walkthrough guide where I show you how to finish the basic setup process and get printing. I'll see you there.